Hey everyone, this is Guitar Player from the ZBB and um, today I want to show you how I did this fun thing because people have been asking me and um, I already have actually one video on YouTube um, but that suffers quite a bit from being long-winded and not quite saying everything I wanted to say. So the first thing is um, let's switch to Windows and um, I've already got uh, Adobe Illustrator fired up here and um, yeah one letter and if we now choose the path tool you can see that I've drawn a path of the shape of the letter and um, okay and to this I've applied an outline dynamically though so I did what I did not do is uh, really draw the outline myself like you normally would probably and um, well I've got this calligraphy pen and you can see the shape here and this is applied to this path. Now why did I do this in Illustrator is um, because uh, for example in um, the Linux tool, uh, the open source one whose name escapes me right now, it's uh, Inkscape, right? In Inkscape um, when you apply a, a shape to a path it will automatically turn the shape around as it goes along the path, which Illustrator does not do. So this is more convenient to make an outline for a letter or for a character. Now what is really important is that you um, set the width of your file to the width uh, you also set for your font in uh, FontForge. And as you can see here, I put, uh, set this to 1024 pixels and um, what is also important if you draw things in Illustrator when you imp uh, when you export them later on that you choose object slice and then export the whole drawing area I don't know what this is called in English because I'm using the German version anyway if you're done drawing you can basically just go to file and then uh, save to web and whatever and it will take a while yes and you can save to SVG which is important because SVG is one of the vector graphic uh, file types that FontForge can import okay so here's our letter and if you hit save it will ask you I've already done this I don't wanna uh, overwrite my file so I'm just clicking cancel right here now and close the program I don't wanna save that Okay, now we can also basically shut down Windows to gain a few more processor cycles because my laptop lacks some memory. Anyway, let's continue. Um, in FontForge then, I've already uh, fired up my font here, but let's just make a new one to demonstrate importing. Now this takes a while because my PC is sluggish. As I said, it lacks memory. Oh wait, okay. So, um, I'm just taking this character now that's not accurate, but anyway. So we've got that drawing area and it's very, very sparse in FontForge. So this is also one reason I'm preferring to draw my letters, my characters, in other dedicated uh, vector graphic programs. So, import and then we choose SVG and now let's hunt for the file and I've got the, this in uh, wait a moment no regular source consonants and then this is the vowel carrier and as you can see also here FontForge uh, was also set to 1024 and you can set this in elements and then um, font properties and um, yeah, right. And the second thing here, which just reads Allgemein in German, but I don't know what it is called in English again. And you can see EM size 1024, and we want that, because we've also set uh, this in Illustrator already. Okay, the, f uh, the thing is, if you don't do this, uh, when importing something, your letter will get distorted, or uh, you have to size it, you have to scale it uh, later on, 
and um, letters are well imported with different uh, widths and heights so that's very inconvenient <coughs> however if you set this to an equal resolution you won't run into problems okay now as we can see this well suffers really a little bit from just drawing the path outline and we can actually delete this path I'm using this just to align my letter <coughs> and um, there's some cleaning necessary because as you can see here there's some weird intersections but we can just make them disappear without much magic though there's still points that need uh, that need to be deleted and this is sometimes also slightly difficult and what's also a little bit inf unfortunate f uh, is that um, since you haven't drawn the complete outline yourself you will sometimes receive these slightly weird dents right um, actually this is very good but um, no, I don't want to save in the version I've already drawn uh, you can see this here it's very apparent that you have weird dents and I don't quite know how to get rid of them because um, if uh, yeah well uh, Fontforge is not really a dedicated vector graphics program so you can't quite do the same and um, merge paths and so on it's a little bit difficult okay and if you've drawn all your letters uh, and hinted them and maybe also current them you can choose create font and then save to TTF which I've already done okay um, now the th uh, this is the basic thing to do to make a font however um, since my writing system also contains some extras so you've got lots of stacking diacritics uh, that are not supported by OpenType for example I've uh, made a graphite definitions file graphite is a font renderer uh, made by the SIL International that's the that was the Summer Institute of Linguistics and that's actually quite nice if you've got a well a created font, a created alphabet, so a, a fictional one. And um, I just show you the file. If you're not interested anymore, you can just safely click stop here. But I think this is kind of neat. Although for my script, it's very difficult because it's quite elaborate and uh, there's lots of combinations possible to stack things. So let's just start this. and again it takes a moment okay so as you can see here um, yeah you basically program font features reordering uh, where to attach things like uh, in this passage and um, then you can compile this information. This is based on a C uh, thing. It's a plugin for C, basically the programming language C. Um, and you compile this information into your font file. And you can use that in ZTech, in uh, LibreOffice or OpenOffice, and in Firefox. Okay, that was it. Thanks for watching.